Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Today, we're talking about Tesla's Battery Invest today, which is coming up in about a week's time. And in my opinion, it's probably going to be the most important event of Tesla's history if you're a Tesla investor or you care about the future of sustainable energy. Battery Invest today is really where Tesla reveals their third master plan, how they intend to scale battery production to multiple terawatt hours this decade. So in this video, I'm gonna share some of my battery day predictions, including those that I think personally are bleedingly obvious and a few that are a little bit more out there. And we're also gonna be discussing Tesla's BFC. Yes, you heard it here first, Tesla's BFC. Don't know what I'm talking about? Go play Doom. And full disclosure, in the lead up to Battery Invest today, I've been buying Tesla stock hand over fist. Not this week though, I ran out of money. What are you gonna do? Anyway, let's get into the video, but first. Hey guys, if you're in the US and you'd like to help out the channel and get a free stock, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account and fund it with $100, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. And if you're in Australia, the UK or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. So the first thing we're gonna discuss is Tesla's BFC, which appears to have leaked this week thanks to electric. Again, it's totally rumor mill, but it appears to have been confirmed by multiple sources. So let's see what Electric had to say. So this is our first look at Tesla's big fucking cell. This leak came via Electric. A couple of photos were sent across. It's since been verified by an independent source that these are battery cells that have come out of Tesla's new Roadrunner battery cell production facility. Take it with a tiny grain of salt, but I think we can probably rely on this as pretty reasonable information, especially given the fact that today, Elon Musk replied to a tweet with an article referencing this cell leak and didn't refute the leak. Interesting. Some of you may be wondering, what's the damn big deal? Who cares, the cell's bigger? Let me explain in super simple terms. Let me quote Elon, in fact. The best part is no part. The best process, no process. What we're seeing here is a gigantic cell that in effect will replace approximately 10 of the existing cells per battery pack. So you're now making one cell for every 10. Far less parts, far less processes, lower error rate, etc. This is really important. The second component, these are tabless batteries. Again, if you're not a battery expert, let me explain in simple terms. This effectively paves the way for Tesla to put these batteries directly into packs without needing battery modules. And it, again, just saves parts and processes. They're deleting complexity, simplifying things, streamlining things. The long and short of it is this. These cells are gonna be moving down the Roadrunner production line. I mean, the name kind of gives it away, right? Roadrunner, at extremely, extremely fast speeds. There's gonna be far less of them required it's gonna save Tesla time, money, materials, energy, everything you can possibly imagine. This is a huge leap forward in battery cell production. And this is what we're gonna hear a lot more about at Battery Investor Day. Another enormous benefit of Tesla's BFC is the weight savings, which will mean range extension or less cost in producing battery packs because the same amount of kilowatt hours in terms of energy in the pack will actually move the car further because there's less weight in the pack because there's no battery modules, etc. This is like compounding improvements on compounding improvements. It is a game changer. And that brings us to Tesla's recently announced Austin Gigafactory, or perhaps Terra Factory. Let's have a look at the plans that just surfaced online a day or so ago. So what we're looking at here is the Austin factory footprint. I've colored the three primary buildings here so you guys can see now. This is just speculation, but what are the odds that one of these buildings, perhaps here over on the left, is going to be where the Roadrunner production lines go? I personally believe that this factory is going to be a game changer. We're going to have insane volumes of cell production. These BFCs will be made in Austin. Eventually, over time, Tesla will probably produce battery cells at other factory sites as well, but this is going to be the hub. We're also going to be seeing semi-production here, Cybertruck, and Model Y. And what's key here is this is gonna be the most efficient version of Model Y to manufacture. They'll have the Giga Castings, all the learnings of Berlin and Shanghai and Fremont, all concentrated in this new production line for Model Y. Then of course, you've got the Cybertruck, which as I've mentioned, is engineering genius and is gonna require far less of a factory footprint than most people expect to produce vehicles. There's no stamping, there's no paint shop. It's really quick, efficient, and cheap to produce. That, I believe, leaves an absolutely enormous amount of space for the cell production. Of course, I'm just imagining, thinking out loud, 
anything could happen, but that's my prediction. We're going to hear a lot about the Austin factory and its pivotal role in Tesla's cell production moving forward. So let's get into some of my other predictions. The first, which I'm pretty confident in, is that Tesla is going to announce battery cell chemistry bifurcation, maybe even trifurcation or more, meaning that there's going to be a distinct battery chemistry for vehicles that are intended for use in robo taxis that don't need extremely high performance. Those same cells are likely to go into stationary storage. And because they can go through an extremely large number of cycles, this is the million mile battery. It's likely that customers buying these vehicles will actually take the battery with them into their next vehicle when the vehicle itself is too old, they're sick of it, whatever, let's upgrade. The battery is going to be alive and working so well that it will move into their next vehicle or it can be deployed in battery stationary storage or it can be sent back to Tesla in the future for recycling which will actually pay out quite a bit in terms of the material cost to the customer. So the battery is going to become an invaluable long term, maybe lifetime asset. The second chemistry, we more geared around performance, including the semi, the roadster, probably the plaid powertrain, Model S and X as well. Again, this is totally me imagining thinking out loud, but I'm pretty confident that we're going to see battery cell chemistry bifurcation or trifurcation over time. It just makes sense. Why on earth would you have identical batteries going into products that have totally different uses and needs in terms of energy density, weight, performance, etc.? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think we're going to see some battery cell chemistry changes? I also suspect that it's likely Tesla will announce that future vehicles will have the option of doing vehicle to grid, meaning your Tesla can actually provide energy to your home or vice versa. For those of you who've ever experienced rolling blackouts or surprise blackouts during a storm or anything along those lines will understand how incredibly frustrating it is to not have power. It's 20 fucking 20, not 1920, yet still people are living without power. Imagine the added utility, a potential customer. Oh, you want to buy a Tesla? Great. The running costs are almost nothing. The purchase price is a little bit above average, but you also get a home battery solution. You will never have to suffer through blackouts again. What do you think? This is just one of many examples where Tesla out of nowhere, out of existing infrastructure, products or services can suddenly turn on a money printer potentially worth billions. Again, just imagine if Autobidder software is involved in the distribution, you may theoretically be able to use your Tesla to pull power off the grid and then sell it back for a profit doing energy arbitrage all automatically with Autobidder software while you sleep. Literally, your Tesla could be printing money for you while you sleep and acting as a backup power supply in case blackouts ever affect you. It's This is again just like, oh cool, let's deploy a network of vehicles, let's figure out autonomy, then let's one day just turn on autonomy and suddenly turn on the money printers. This is another example of that. Keep in mind, Tesla continues to lay the foundation and suddenly go, hang on, how can we monetize this further? Add more value. Oh, great, here's another idea. This won't be the last time Tesla pulls this trick, but it's a really important one. Just imagine every future potential Tesla customer is not only buying a Tesla, they're buying a money printer that can do energy arbitrage and save their ass in the event of a blackout. This provides incredibly high value to a potential customer. I'm on the fence as to whether or not we'll hear any more detailed information about the Plaid Model S and X and the Roadster, but I suspect at the very least we may hear a hint that some of these new BFCs will go into those products. But I have a funny feeling Elon's probably going to want to save that for another event to really show off the specs of these new updated high performance vehicles. Let me know in the comments, do you think we'll see the Plaid powertrain, a new Roadster update, anything like that at the battery day? Will that be saved for another event? And now for the big going out on a limb crazy out there prediction i think that there's a roughly 50 percent chance that tesla is going to announce a partnership or a licensing deal some way that their cells will be going to other companies they will either say that they intend to provide cells to other automotive manufacturers etc if they want them in the future or if they've somehow figured out supply chain and production, they may in fact already behind the scenes have been working on a supply partnership with another automotive manufacturer. Let me know in the comments below if you think this is insane or not. Now, who might this be? I mean, VW would be an interesting candidate. I don't really know, and I'm not sure. I am sure of this. In the future, Tesla will be supplying battery cells to other automakers. My main question is this. At Battery Invest today, will they say we're open to doing this? Or will they take it a step further and say, we're going to be doing this with, and here's a partner, here's another partner, etc. I'm still unsure whether or not Tesla's got far enough along, they've sorted out production, etc., where they're actually able to do this, they've got enough supply of materials, but I know it's coming. And I think this is the coin toss. At Battery Invest today, if Tesla has a partnership, here's an example of how a partnership might work. Tesla says to automotive company who wants to buy their batteries, all right, no problem, you pay for our factory, we'll sell you the cells, 
give you a little bit of a discount. What do you think? That way Tesla's not putting up capital, but they are getting revenue almost immediately. Another alternative is to partner, go in collaboratively. We put in some capital, you put in some capital. We build a factory together. It's our tech, it's our cells. You get some of the supply or you get them at wholesale. Or another way is Tesla goes, nah, we can do this all ourselves. We're gonna build our factories. You can buy our cells from us, the end. You don't get any part in the factory. No, we don't even need your money. Just buy the cells, the end product, and that'll do ya. As I mentioned, this is the most exciting event in Tesla's history from the perspective of somebody who owns Tesla stock. And of course, somebody who's very interested in watching the world transition to sustainable energy. Now, just a few closing thoughts. Tesla's Roadrunner battery cell production line and BFC are absolute game changers. However, if history is anything to go by, there's a pretty high chance the stock market is gonna look and go, uh, what? After all, the Cybertruck reveal resulted in Tesla stock going Same thing happened after Autonomy Day, two of the most important events in Tesla's history. In fact, the Cybertruck unveil got me so fired up because people were like, oh, I don't like the design. And I'm like, do you not fucking understand why it looks that way? Like, seriously, dude? Like, oh, fuck this. I need to start a YouTube channel. Literally, this is what happened. I'm glad a lot of people watched that, by the way. If you're one of the million or so people that saw the Cybertruck is engineering genius video, Good for you. The point I'm making is this. There's a good chance that the stock market is going to see Battery Day and not understand what it has seen. If that's the case, I'm pretty much going to sell every internal organ I have to buy more Tesla stock. Not joking. However, if Tesla announces a partnership or licensing deal to provide their new Roadrunner battery cells to other automotive manufacturers, I think even the stupid stock market is probably going to struggle not to understand the positive implications of that news. Let me know your Battery Investor Day predictions in the comments below. Anything that I've missed that you think is pretty likely to be announced? Do you agree or disagree with my predictions? Anything you want to add or change? And of course, most importantly, just for a little bit of fun, what do you think the stock market is going to do? How will the stock market react to the news announced at Battery Investor Day? Stock goes up, stock goes down, stock goes sideways. What do you think? Of course, none of us know. That's the beauty of the stock market. You have no idea about the collective actions of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, or millions of people on any given day, but it's fun to guess. So far, it seems to be the case that Tesla announces amazing news and the stock market literally doesn't get it. A few smart investors go, great, I'm gonna load up during this opportunity. And then eventually, after much delay, the wider stock market starts to understand some of the potential that was bleedingly obvious, in fact, stated in no uncertain terms by Tesla themselves at a prior event months ago, perhaps years ago. It still baffles the mind how Tesla does a reveal like this and people just don't get the implications. So I'm really fascinated to see what happens with Tesla stock. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. And don't forget your free stocks with Webull and Stake using the links below. Deposit $100 in your Webull account, you'll get a free stock valued up to $1,600. And Stake, spin the rule at will, you'll either get Nike, GoPro or Dropbox. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. And don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.